Rams, welcome to your turn with Yasir Jones. We have the honor to speak with an astounding woman, Ms. Angela Osserbrooks. Ms. Angela Osserbrooks serves as the county, Prince George's County County Executive. She has served since December 2018. Ms. Osserbrooks became the first woman to be elected County Executive for Prince George's County. Ms. Osserbrooks, thank you for being here with the Rams Morning Show today. And before right. we learn about your mission in Prince George's County, can you tell us about your journey to becoming the first woman to be elected county executive? Well, first of all, thank you so much, Yasir, and hello to all the Rams, uh, and thank you all for inviting me on today. So it really has been a wonderful journey that started um, like your journey. I am a native-born Prince Georgian and so proud that I have spent my entire life here. I want you to know that I attended some schools in Prince George's, uh, I graduated from high school actually in the district and, uh, and went to Duke University, which is a very controversial thing to do for somebody from Maryland, right? Uh, most people are not Blue Devil fans, but left Duke University, went to the University of Maryland to law school and started my career in the state's attorney's office uh, in 1997 as the first ever full-time domestic violence prosecutor. Uh, from there, uh, became the executive director of the county's revenue authority, which is an economic development agency. Decided to run for office in 2010, um, believing that I could not only make a difference in my community, but change really um, how Prince George's County was perceived with respect to crime and, uh, and, and, and believing also that we were going to be able to grow our community by making it safer. Now, what I can tell you is I found as prosecutor that many of the problems I saw in the courthouse, I felt stemmed from a lack of investment in education, uh, mental health care, uh, jobs creation, and many other things. So I decided to try to go higher and run for county executive so that I would have the opportunity uh, to heal much of what I saw playing out in the courthouse. And so I was elected in 2018 as the county executive. Wow, what a journey, what a journey. It's very inspirational. So for the students that aren't aware, what do you do as a county executive in Prince George's County that affects the students in the school system? Oh my goodness, what do I do? What a job it is. So the county executive is the chief executive of the county, uh, which means that I have supervision over many areas. One is that uh, I oversee the police department, the fire department, the department of corrections. Uh, it means as well that I have the opportunity to select for our school system uh, the chief executive officer. So you know that uh, school's chief, Dr. Monica Golson, I had the opportunity to select. Uh, it means that I am also responsible to make sure that the roads are repaved, to make sure that snow is uh, removed when it snows outside. I have the responsibility also of attracting businesses to Prince George's County. Uh, so it's just, it's, it's a really all encompassing job, but it, it is chief executive of the county. Uh, which means it's equivalent to what you see as mayor in some of the other larger cities, but have responsibility over many, many areas of our county and of your daily life. So my next question is, in your interview in March with the Washington Post, you stated, I have some things I have promised Prince Georgians, and I'm going to continue to work to make sure I deliver those things. What are those specific things that you've promised the Prince Georgians? So one of the things I promised was that I was going to make investments in our school system. Uh, and we have absolutely made tremendous investments, including um, a capital project that would allow us to build six new schools uh, in the next three years. I also made a promise that we would really reform uh, the way the government operated, that we would uh, make investments in the government so that government services could be better delivered to our citizens. So we're working hard every day um, to make sure that we're improving those services that uh, your parents pay hard earned tax dollars for uh, and to make sure that we're attracting businesses to us that can help us to grow our tax base and alleviate the strain that our families feel who pay taxes, property taxes. Right, right. And this really jumps into my third question about you being the first female elected prosecutor and that's like the biggest deal ever. And because you've had mentorship with our Vice President Kamala Harris, how has this mentorship impacted your ability to lead? Well, you know what? I think that it is important um, to pour into other people. And similar to how Vice President uh, Kamala Harris uh, has served as a mentor to me to answer questions, to give encouragement, to give guidance, um, it's really caused me to also look for the same opportunities 
to make sure that I'm impacting other people's lives, that I'm growing them, giving opportunities for leadership. Uh, in that Washington Post article, I think hope uh, I hope demonstrated um, that among the things that are very important to me, growing leaders is also a part of the agenda. Right. And has this mentorship affected your goals in Prince George's County or what your mission is? Well, you know what? The mission has always been the same, and that is to make sure that I am uh, pouring into the families of Prince George's County, uh, into our children in Prince George's County, really growing opportunity and helping Prince George's County to be the amazing county that we all know it is. Prince George's County is very important to the state of Maryland. Yes. Um, and, and it's just, so that that has not changed. Right. And this relates to my next question that has to do with leadership. So as you know, Prince George's County will be operating at full capacity as of this Monday, April 17th. So how do you think schools will operate given the possibility COVID cases could increase? Well, you know what? I think the possibility is that COVID cases will actually decrease. And that's what we're seeing. Um, is thankfully because of the vaccine. And we were able to vaccinate a, a large number of our teaching staff and others from the school system to make sure that they were safe. As you know now, the CDC has also authorized our students uh, 12 years old and older to be vaccinated. So the more people who are able to be vaccinated, we're seeing that our positivity rates are declining. We're seeing infection rates are declining. Um, so it's our expectation that by the time we come back to school in the fall, uh, we're hoping that it's going to be a very safe environment for people to come back into. Right. So Ms. Also Brooks, thank you for being here with us today. And is there anything you would like to say to the growing leaders at Sam Yogo Middle School? Well, all to all of the growing leaders at Samuel Ogle, I want to tell you, first of all, that we are so proud of you um, to tell you that we are looking forward to all that you will contribute to Prince George's County to urge you to continue to be your best selves and to remember that the best is yet to come. Thank you so much, Ms. Austin. Thank you so much. Thank you for the interview.